In the game Destiny 2, there's a significant amount of places that go unseen by a large majority of the player base. Whether that be a simple lost sector, or an entire planet that simply doesn't exist anymore, the developers are constantly adding and removing things from the game as it is a live service game. But one area in particular was almost never found, and had eluded discovery from the community's player base for almost four years. And when it was found, it would affect how I myself and many others would play the game forever. The craziest part about its location is that it's been hiding all this time on the EDZ, out of the map, in an area that is already out of the map. Here's what I mean. Way back in Destiny 2's first year, there was a mission in the Red War campaign called Shard of the Traveler. When you load into the mission, you spawn into the sludge and you're tasked with entering the Dark Forest. As you made your way into the Dark Forest, you would eventually come to a portal that would open up and allow the player to teleport around the map into separate versions of the Dark Forest. This portal is no longer in the current game. Remember this. As the player made their way around the Dark Forest, they would eventually come across light projections of their class's respective leaders which would tell the player lore about their current class and give lessons, as the ghost says. As a titan, you lead the charge. When the player finally goes through the last portal, they are met with the Shard of the Traveler, where they obtain a new subclass and test it out by slaying a bunch of enemies around the area. Once you complete the mission, it warps you out of the area, and the mission ends. And that's it. In today's Destiny, the only thing that's left of the Dark Forest is just this little cave. As you walk in, the only thing that's left is a couple of floating rocks. And no working portal. There's no way to go upwards or outwards in any way, as the tiny cave has death barriers and walls surrounding the entirety of it. When people saw this for the first time, it really seemed like that was it. People just accepted the fact that the content they paid for and originally fell in love with was gone and it was never to be seen again. Except, it wasn't. Hackers were the first people to break into the restricted areas of the forest, exploring anything and everything they could. Quarantine Sector 236 was discovered outside of the Dark Forest, which was an area from a mission in the Red War campaign, The Spark. In Quarantine Sector, multiple statues of guardians with no textures were discovered that didn't exist before, as well as another statue inside a tree at the Shard of the Traveler. JB3 was one of, if not the first people to get outside of the Dark Forest. While he made his way further outside the map's boundaries, he randomly started getting pulled into the Traveler by some kind of gravity tether. He had no idea what it was, and no idea what was causing it. Almost eight months later, a video was released that would create the start of one of Destiny's biggest mysteries to date. A player by the name of AZ-1.2 was exploring outside the dark forest and somehow he had hit a secret unnamed load. After hitting it, he slowly started ascending into the Traveler, just like JB3 had, except this time was different. Suddenly, an entire sky of stars surrounded him as a beautiful galaxy hung suspended in the distance. He's then abruptly warped onto a floating platform suspended in space with purple neon lights and a small pool of water directly in the middle. This is the galaxy pool. After the discovery of Galaxy Pools, players wanted to get there legitimately, but knew it wasn't going to be an easy task, and the only people in the world who had been there at the time were using fly hacks and noclip. A group of insanely smart players in the Destiny community would use their knowledge of the game's mechanics to abuse sparrows and find ways to get into the Galaxy Pools legit over the course of time. And after many, many, many months later, Someone had finally done it legitimately. Want to not get sucked? Should I try right here? I'm getting sucked. Close enough. 
I hit the load. I hit the fucking load. I hit the load. I hit the load. The load has been hit. I am recording. I hit the load. Oh my god. We're done. It's happening. Yeah. We are here. Oh my god, we're at the pools! We're at the fucking pools! Let's go. Oh my god. It is public. Oh my god, we're here. Let's go. Here's the entirety of the process it took to get there legitimately. First, load into the sludge. Have a friend set an interdimensional res breach in Mavic Square. Climb up and out of the map in the sludge. Fly directly under the load for Dark Forest and summon your sparrow. Land that sparrow on this tiny rock. Flip the sparrow with the behemoth melee. Land a second sparrow on the rock. And then perform the Dropbox glitch. For those of you who don't know what the Dropbox glitch was, it was basically a glitch that traded the identities of your sparrow. The game thinks you're trying to get on the sparrow that's falling, so it teleports you to it, bypassing the kill barriers. You then have to infinitely fly that same sparrow all the way across and above the map. You cannot resummon in the dark forest load, and if you lose that sparrow or fall off of it, you have to start the whole process over again. After about 10 to 20 minutes of infinitely sparrow flying and dodging all the kill barriers, you would bring your sparrow above this rock. And at this point, your sparrow starts to get pulled in by the gravity tether. So you jump off and behemoth melee to counter the pull. And finally, after all of that, you'll hit the load. And the game will carry you into the sky and put you at rest in space on the platform. After this discovery was made, the only thing I wanted to do was get there. No raids. Nope. No nightfalls. Whether we wanted it or not, we stepped into a war with a Nope. Ball. No crucible. No nope. what? No gambit. No. Nope. Just sludge. Only sludge. I didn't know how to sparrow fly that well at the time and definitely couldn't infinitely do it, so I started grinding every day. I would go to the cistern, go to the red roof, and practice every day until I eventually got to the point where I was confident enough to make the flight myself for the first time. Oh my god. By the time I was ready to make the flight, two intelligent gamers by the name of Salvo and Poofafish had discovered a new way to set up the sparrows. This made it infinitely easier to actually set up and attempt to go to the galaxy pools. Using their method, I was finally able to have a reliable way to consistently get out of the dark forest, and attempts started flying by. All night my friend and I had stayed up until finally I had made it to the IRB point where I could get my friend's res. We then from here made our very first flight ever into Quarantine Sector 236 from Patrol, which like I said was removed with the Red War campaign, so it was super cool to be there again. Interestingly enough, there's actually more going on in Quarantine Sector than you'd initially think. As I said earlier, there are Guardian statues which were not there before in the original mission but also destructible trees? And there we go. And a scannable. A scannable has no dialogue, which I'm sure is no surprise. Something really awesome about Quarantine Sector 236 is that you're allowed to summon your Sparrow. So Quarantine Sector acts somewhat as a checkpoint for galaxy pools. After we were done exploring Quarantine Sector, we made our way back into the Dark Forest. We brought our sparrows from Quarantine Sector into Dark Forest since you can't summon in the Dark Forest, and it's here that the final drop box would take place to get us into the galaxy pools. After a long night's journey and many, many months of preparation, I was finally going to hit the load for the first time. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh. I can't describe to you the amount of joy I had felt in that moment. It felt like one of the hardest things I had ever done in a video game, and I didn't even have to do it. There was no obligation, no secret chest, 
No awesome hidden gun. But what I did find was priceless memories with friends and the ability to use a sparrow in ways that would keep me addicted to the game for years to come. My goal with this video wasn't to complain about Bungie keeping content from us, so please don't get the wrong idea here. My intentions are to shed more light on awesome discoveries like this, because it seriously surprises me how many veterans of the game have never even heard of this place. Getting out of bounds in Destiny has since became all that I ever do. I have been addicted to seeing anything behind a closed door, any area in a game that exists. I want to scour for secrets or anything hidden that could be sitting right there in front of us that we didn't even know. Destiny has three game modes if you ask me, PvE, PvP, and Out of Bounds. I highly encourage all of you to give it a try. Anytime you're not feeling PvP, raids, or the current week's Grandmaster, Try exploring with your friends. You never know what you could find that's been right there all along.